Hello there and welcome to this one. Is there such thing as high level players that play on this Renox gap? Back when I used to play this game big time, this map hadn't been invented yet. And then a few, I won't say, I don't know, put exact time, like three or four years ago, I came back and everybody was playing this bloody map. And so I joined into a game too and I thought, all right, I sort of see a little bit of the appeal. Reminds me very much of that very early game, uh, map of Thermodomo Nomonopoly. Yeah, you've got, it's almost a bit like Settons, but instead of water, you've got these unaccessible cliffs and it was always a no air game sort of a role. And it was basically one of two things happened. Either which team could steamroll down the mid the quickest or who was the first one to start lobbing game enders across. That was always the game. And to me, this map sort of seemed like a little bit like that. I don't want to say it was quite as bad because we've got water almost like a set-ons, but with the mounted in mountainous regions. And ta-da, today, let's uh, do away with the intro music there. We've got a 6v6. Now, look at some of these ratings, guys. We've got 2,000 rated players in this on both teams. Lowest rated player is Waz up at 14 and one on the other guy, uh, Circassian, let's call him. Everybody else is 1500 or above. So this is a high rated game. It is a 6v6. Those of you good at maths, that means 12 in total. That means I'm going to miss shit. If you're ready... Let's get ready to hit. I was going to say, if you're ready and I'm ready, and the players are sure as hell ready, but of course that's somebody else that says that. And I sound like a freak saying it. And so let's just crack on. Bit of music. And so while we're going, let's slow time down a bit. And I am going to start uh, in the top left corner here. And we'll start introducing guys from this one way on. Uh, first here in pink on team one is Artanis. He's going Cybran and First Land, so completely uh, a regular build here. Uh, to his south side, we've got Burning Firefly. He's UEF, and he, by the way, the lowest rated there, 1400. And last for the top side of Team 1 is Lieutenant Reed here. He's going Aeon Orange, also First Land. Now to the south side, again, all Team 1 here. In yellow, we've got Aeon over here, and it's, uh, I'm just going to call him Alina. He's 19, or they, 1900, also going first land. To their south side, it's another Cybran player, and it's Marxism Lenism. Oh, that's, uh, he's named himself that to, uh, I think, get Guile all upset, because we know how Guile and socialism, he loves to have a rant about that. Not that uh, the capitalistic system is treating any or most of us particularly well, but I guess communism would be worse. He also wear uh, their cyber and so it's up. Uh, by the way, is there more possibilities than just those two economic systems? I'll leave that one there. To his south is yet another cyber in here in grey. It's was up also 1400. Uh, so I guess uh, apologies there. Two 1400 players on the left side on team one. Uh, over then, starting on team two, we'll work our ways top to bottom again. Here in purple top side, it's another Cybran here. Senekin 24. This guy rated 15. Uh, to his south on the coast in light purple. We've got uh, Lefusiel here, or Fu Fusilier, is it? Uh, he's going Seraphin, so the first Seraphin in the game. This guy clocking in find him on the list there 1500 and then on the front side another uef nice one and he's 1500 here now we'll call him krozak never going to remember all these guys i'm going to start calling players by colors on this one there's just simply too many for my little brain to cope with to the south side then team two it's what's this elder brock certainly come across this guy before he's the uh, 1800 Seraphin 
Uh, first air, this guy. So we'll have to see what he makes do with that. You see that. Where did he get those two engineers? Oh, I see. He was assisting his air factory. I thought he was building it and somehow had these engineers out. No, it's just me that needs glasses. Right, so his south side, it's emptiness. The 2000 rated cyber player for team two in the uh, army green, let's call it, and ways, ways down. It's yet another seraphin, yet another green. Circazan on seraphin. So, a little short, you know, usually you see a few more UEFs. We're very cyber and heavy on this map. I'm not sure if this is a map that favours cyber and perhaps the, uh, if you want to rush uh, strats and stealth bombers. Um, so that was uh, certainly for me the basically one of the, if not the main reason for going cyber. And it was for the stealth, whether it was on the ACU with gun, whether it was the mobile stealth field, whether it was the T2 stealth gen on the Navy, or of course the stealth strat. Of course you had the, uh, you know, stealth fighters as well, but... It really comes into their own on the strats. All right, let's resume game full pace then as we come in up to the second minute. Very fast advance here from Lieutenant Reed on the Aeon, pushing his AC out quick. Not sure if he perhaps left his base before build capacity slash resources was on the stall. But uh, either way, he's got Hydro, he's got two mixes, he's working on another PJ in there. Not sure why he's reclaiming when he hasn't yet reclaimed all his mass spots and players. We're not seeing it here, perhaps because we're higher rated, but certainly some of the lower rated players, one of the worst things they would do is before they'd even, they'd like first NG that was out would come and start reclaiming the mass before anyone else got it. And they haven't built anything in base. Very, very inefficient. You want to get reclaiming stuff, i.e. the resources down here are unlimited. Get that capped off. Then go get these one-time use resources. Who cares if one of your teammates gets there in two minutes time and you don't get to have the whole field for yourself? All right, let's have a look. First shot coming out. It's this little scout. I don't think it's going to get any kills, but we'll see. I guess it would do eventually, but two DPS, it's going to take over two minutes just to take one of these engineers out. And in that time, uh, it's just been used for intel. All right, Reed continuing to push out both teams. Got scouts out and we've got a bomber here. Bang, picking up a kill. Is that for Elderbrook? It is. Elderbrook, did it get a bomb away? No, but it has got shot down. Now, for some reason, did that bomb not show us a kill for Elderbrook? To me, it looked like he killed that NG for sure. But when I selected the bomber, it didn't seem to say so. All right, dropships coming in here for blue. <laughs> ah, that's slightly ambitious there, right next to the enemy ACU. You see, he is trying to pull the NG away to save it. And because this ACU here from Lieutenant Reed is tied up building this factory, I think he is going to manage it. And he's going to be right cheeky, reclaim the rock and get some of this reclaim. We see here, Krozak actually got another NG dropped here onto this mass field. And that's not going to take too much longer. We've got a nice little raiding party in there. Burning Firefly. Picking up two engineers trying to steal the reclaim field. That was a good pickup indeed. Very stabilised fronts as you'd expect at this stage. Just too many players to try anything too funky at this part of the game. But it's like Firefly very heavy here on the uh, mech marines now these mech marines never really used to be built in my time but i think i don't know what they've done if they've lowered the cost or increased the dps slightly but i see mech marines as a very legitimate play style today i see many players using them a lot more i mean we used to get like one or two out in my day they were maybe the first two units that you built and then that was it you never built them again but now and, you know, nice to see more people using ghetto gunships as well. I mean, that was a thing. It was so rare, though. All right, Mech Marines tangoing with an ACU. That's only ever going to go one way. One shot, one kill for the ACU. 
couple of bombers coming down here from Seinkin. And they have just been picked up by that scout. I wonder what their objective is. Is it to pick up reclaiming ace, uh, engineers? Now nah, it looks like they're going for these P-Gens. Hey, since we have two bombers, I've always been able to pick off P-Gens like that. Well, I'll have to see. Now they're going to circle back around and potentially pick up these engineers as well. But I've certainly got one of them and a bunch more P-Gens. Antis moving in with his interceptors does manage to shoot one. Another bomber gets another raid off. I think... Oh my goodness, that was unlucky. For sure he had him, but no, and he loses another three PGENs due to that mistake. Guess his APM's tied up elsewhere. Players begging for energy, and let's see our Tannis. Yeah, he's stalled big time. Don't forget, each one of these PGENs putting out 20, so we've got 20, 80, sorry, 60, 60 is 120, and another 60 over here, so he's losing 128 energies due to that bombing rate at the worst possible time we see him there stalling big time now he does have a shed load of engines on reclaim and i do like that you're able to select these and see exactly what sort of reclaim they've been able to achieve of course i okay there we go you've got to hover the mouse over yes yeah, so look at that 575 581 586 coming up to 600 energy here you see the mass is negligible it's 70 mass but energy this one over a thousand so this very much worth it fusilier what's he doing is he thrown in the towel already he's gonna quit right in the middle of a mass field doesn't even donate his shit that is very sad to see any reasons behind that or has he just disappeared hey that's me doing that i'm trying to look for the uh Well, maybe too much Russian in chat. T2 when can, he requests. Does he want in uh, the P-Gens? Ah, the engineers. Okay, there we go. Very nice. Teamwork. Indeed. All right, first couple of triads going down. In fact, so far, three of them. So Krozak able to lock down the front. Now, one of the things, usually, all right, the quitting guy would have had his stuff donated. Now, whether he, it's a no-share game or whether it's, uh, you know, he was pissed off at Summit and Control Cady's entire base. Who knows? But his base has already been cannibalized. And, of course, the uh, mass reclaim as well. So this is certainly going to give the top two guys a boost. Now, Krozak's going to need it because it looks like he's 2v1 on the central estate. Thank goodness he's got these T2 triads down. And lucky here to pick off that flapjack because he hadn't yet got TMD down. And that lucky pick up on that flapjack, little mistake from Firefly, is uh, going to give Krozak a little bit more time than he would have otherwise had. Nice little pick up up here, Krozak might even be able to hold the front line solo here a couple of lucky breaks he does have a little run by up here but he's got so many land batteries i think he's going to be able to shut that little striker run by down no problem hiya sweetheart you come to watch the game with us there we go my cat's little come to join us and yet, Krozak still able to hold this down. What is he going for gun and range? Meanwhile, in Southside, a whole bunch of subs here from Alina, the 1900 rated going solid sub. And looks like he is going to be able to pick off that battle. I don't think there's the uh, Team 2 here, the 1800, is going to be able to come back from this. There is too many subs. We'll have to see. Now, ah... Uh, Two mass points just hitting tech two, and that's gonna. <laughs> that is unfortunate. You just get tech two. You're. Uh, oh well. At least look at this. He's gonna benefit from it for five seconds. That's better than nothing. T1 naval fact that's producing, of all things, frigates. Not that that would help one iota with what's going on here. 
in addition to that we've got a c1 bomber with 21 for what oh my goodness what is going on 24 kills for a t1 bomber completely vetted out team to wake up gonna hand it though Prozac here, the 1500, locking down the middle like a boss, considering he's 2v1. Thankfully, he was able to get hold of uh, four of these additional mass points. And yeah, this here, not at all looking good for Team 2. Team 1, single-handedly here, the uh, 1900, Alina, steamrolling in with the subs legit tactic question is well if he can get a reclaim off on some of these damaged <laughs> trying to ground fire now you need to put uh torpedo launchers in or a reclaim oh dear t2 navy hq here from krozak once again is about to go down for free you need torpedo bombers or something here and now. We'll have to see if this is uh, an early death blow. And finally, we do got torpedo bomber out here from Team 2. Sanekin24 to the rescue. Of course, these torp bombers are going to get completely perfect trades. While the enemy don't got an air presence over here, we got two torpedo bombers now. His question is, is he going to be able to hold on to this factory? And not unless he gets uh, engineers on the case. Torpedo bombers continuing to rain in, but I think it's going to be too little too late. I think Krozak is going to lose this factory. Yeah. Now, if he'd have had engineers trying to repair it, would he have held on to it? I think so. Because even if these enemy fleets would have thought, well, they can easily kill the destroyers. Uh, sorry, the engineers. Yeah, they could have. But then I think the factory would have lived. And there we can see it. Very nice engage there from Alina. Goes in, completely wipes out the opposing navy and pulls out. Although the pullout he is going to lose his forces. But uh, jobs are good. And especially that T2 Navy HQ. Very nice pickup indeed. And uh, gives him time to tech up in the rear. And looks like he's going for a mixture of Cybran and Aeon. Some T3 air engage here for the first time. And looks like Firefly versus Waz up there. Firefly able to win the initial engage. Land forces here. We've already got a bunch of harps steamrolling through from Lieutenant Reed. Prozac's going to struggle to hang on to this. Don't forget, he is 2v1. He is still at the uh, 1v2 stage as well. He is now putting Ravagers down. Question is, is he going to be able to get enough of these down in time? He needs to put some more T2 guns down just because those are quicker to build, the triads. And we've got a strap bomber in here as well. That is going to help him out a little bit. If he can put that smack down over onto these uh, plumps up bots. Well, he's going after the uh, Firefly's UEF. Firefly in a little bit of trouble here. He's got at least one Ravenger locked in. Although the Ravenger now going down to the artillery. Strap bomber still circling above. Firefly attempting to micro his ACU down to a thousand hit points that said Krozak in a spot of bother as well Krozak going down to all those harbs such a shame those harbs were clumped up if that had been picked up by his team I'd have liked to have seen the strap bomber into those uh... Hi, right, another strap down onto a lieutenant reed but uh, too little too late there Another player going down, so Cher is not on. That huge loss there to Team 2, losing both their front players. Both the front players for Team 1 still alive. 
standing now to uh, 6 v 4. Don't forget, one of these guys quit, which is uh, not very nice. Lovely strap on there to the face onto Lieutenant Reed. Of course, he's got his shield in. But uh, still, to wipe out large percentage points of his shield there. Now, we've got two strats in the air here for Team 2. They seem to have complete air dominance. This is their saving grace. A third one out here for Team 2 from another player. Circassian, no less. And drops one down. Perfect placement there. Takes out a bunch of mechs as well as putting a load of damage down onto these factories. So many engineers here. They need to keep bombing. Oh, 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 it's going to be close. Firefly with 1,300 hit points left. Surely this is it. Firefly. Kaboom. A much needed win there for Team 2. First player going down there on the left-hand side. Bringing it back. Five versus four. These strats looking like they're unopposed for now. I'm surprised we haven't seen Alina push this naval advantage a little more. He seems to sort of rush his initial kill and then didn't do anything with it still just at the t1 stage i mean what's he doing is he just trying to tech up as uh well there's the answer t2 t2 with storage and yeah this initial storage nice to see from high rate players uh so of course if you surround your mass with storage you get a boost but initially to put one storage between two mass points is going to get you a double boost versus all the other spots here just a little bit and so yeah very nice to see we see he's done the same down here props then of course in the rear he's got his t3s he's capped off a shit ton of drones and he's rushing a t3 strategic missile launcher could this be the end see if team two is even aware of the situation and they are they have put down the uh, nuke notifier question is are they going to be able to do anything about it in time a whole bunch of top bombers coming in here now for lieutenant reed don't forget team two complete air dominance if they can pick this guy off his shield is almost completely depleted it uh, does get picked off okay question is is was up going to lose his air support Air superiority fighters once again for defending this guy. Let's see. And... Well... Looks like the answer may there be yes. Incredible trades there for Team 2. Looks like Sankin was able... Oh my goodness, he just evaporated the opposing guy's ASF almost for free. I have never... Uh, granted, it did look like 3-2, to two, but he just picked those guys off almost for naught. These two strap bombers once again. Oh my goodness, very nice pickup. T3 HQ hanging on by a thread there. And he's going to lose it. Bang! Where's that bomb going? Picking off. Not quite. But laying the smack down on the ion damage there. I think Artanis there, the 1500 Cybrant. Kind of lucky to get away with that. At one point when the shields have gone down. I thought if he puts a bomb here. But uh, alas, he didn't. Uh, the middle looking much... <laughs> Much more like a no man's land since we lost the player there to the left hand side. Five versus four here. Team one with the fifth player on the left. Strategic launch. And wow. New count 19 minutes, 20 odd seconds into the game. I don't think you're going to see many games where you get a nuke any quicker than that. Strategic launch detected. How is that a counter nuke? Oh my goodness. Two nukes from two different teams, both out on the 19th minute. And looks like the two nukes are trying to knock one another out. And very nice. Look at this, the reclaim. He realizes his base is effed. 
he may as well try and reclaim what he can that is incredible play and then he control k's to prevent his opponent from gaining and his opponent doing exactly the same wow i have never seen this done to this amount of skill players control kane and reclaiming their own base while the nuke is in flight lower rated guys and i include myself with that take note present preventing the other guy a from vetting up and b getting the maximum amount of mass possible spilling over into your teammates coffers as you were very very nice team play there from these two guys and yeah it's gonna now start from scratch be nice to see some of his team contributing you know he just needs one capped off mass point a little bit of energy and same here for the opponent and those guys are going to get right back into the game come on he needs a hand he gets a drone in place then a mass point then two or a hive sorry but same thing right now is this a t3 acu certainly seems to be built no it's t2 okay t2 together with the hive of course his team's going to be spilling energy so to begin with he just needs mass once again more strats in on the other side doesn't look like they were able to do quite the damage this time and they're picked off what's up with what looks like the superior base at the moment was able to shield it off with all those drone kennels and the uh, air grid that's establishing here expect to see team one take over the air shortly this is a crime alina how was alina ever able to get allow the other side back into the drink the other side now pushing through with an aircraft carrier or two this is a crime alina you know wiping the floor in the early stages i thought that was going to be game set match for navy this should not have been allowed to happen lieutenant reed looks like he's sat in the rear teching up all of these guys looking like they're getting for their strategic missile defense looks like uh everybody went into second gear while they put that into first this here wow these destroyers just getting absolutely fantastic trades against all this shite meanwhile alina carrying on spamming the t1 gunk i don't see why the t1 at this point is just feeding the other guy i mean look at this destroyers top bombers endless amounts of shite let's see how quick the first guy is to drop the uh, engineers in and here we see it reinforcements already set onto the front line just wow it just blows my mind the the apm that top players have and this uh forward base here from lieutenant reed trying to knock out a gc that's already three quarters done look at the speed that gc there hit points flying up as is, uh, is the reed floating uh not really but he's making use of what he's got and here we got some uh, cruiser missiles coming in reed spamming up there the tmd and looks like he needs more has aeon tmd been nerfed oh my goodness nice to see these aircraft carriers are they like cruisers as well are aircraft carriers basically cruisers that have got planes in the back because this to me seems like a cruiser missiles you've got your sam site not sure if that was always the case finally we see a t2 out there from alina another new cat from team one meanwhile and here we see the uh, gc almost complete is he gonna lose the gc for naught it's almost there finally he's got his engineers on the case that gc finishes now nah, let's see let's see of course they can walk in the uh water a little bit and have their uh, eye still poking out somewhat we'll have to see come on get your gc and there we go gc finally 
And that nuke that went across over here to Team 2 shot down just in time. And there we can see it. The second missile is on the way to being built. So very close indeed there. Uh, we've got another strategic missile defense here. So at least I feel that Team 2 are covered on the top side. And at this point, uh, I think nukes are to be used more defensively. So obviously this here, good target. Although this SMD is about to uh, grab itself a nuke. And GC, meanwhile, advancing. Now look at this. Team 2 is recognizing the GC. I mean, there's no other need for them to pull these Navy ships back. Three of which are destroyers. And yeah, this T3 battleship is going to pop off at the GC and it will chew through those hit points. Of course, GC not able to fire back completely out of range. What the GC will be able to do, though, is mop up this gunk that is left from Team 1 on the front. And it is gunk. There is nothing here that's any threat to Team 2. So I feel like this GC is out here for, well, basically no reason. I guess... He just felt there was no point keeping him on the coastline. I was Team 1, though. I mean, okay. Team 2 finally putting a couple of T2 subs out. Uh, T2 destroyers. But these are going to go down to the T3 battleships. Uh, team 1 needs to recognize here that they're... Uh, chucking these ships away. A run there on top, bombers. Uh, is it going to pick off don't even manage to pick off one ship expensive little mistake there meanwhile these aircraft carriers with these relentless tmls just remind me like the aeon and the seraphine cruisers eating a destroyer fight okay so they're stronger as well so they are they're basically like a, a tech 3 version of a tech 2 cruiser that's what it feels like to me And yeah, naval battle heating up real nicely now. I have to see there. This GC, unbelievable. Still taking fire. Lost half its hit points. And it's just going to mop up some T1 shite in return. I mean, you may say, well, it's got 52 kills. Yeah, but half of that, in fact, all of it, I think, has been tech one, you know, like these little things here. I mean, don't forget if it kills a mole, which is now it's worth a kill. I mean, look at that. I mean, to me, these uh, three Tech 1 engineers were more dangerous at this stage of the game than any of this T1's spam. Alina here, trying to swarm the larger enemy ships with the frigates, which is very nice play. Trying to tie up the uh, very limited amount of firepower. I mean, they've got a lot of punch, but can only shoot once in a blue moon, these battleships. So if you can tie that up with the crap and let your bigger ships in the rear have at it, but uh, looks like Alina's deciding, no, this is not in my favor. And that's because Elderbrock here, managing to get critical mass with his T3 ships, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Tech 3 ships here from Elderbrock. So this is the time where we're talking about using these nukes defensively. If Team 2's got a nuke, they want to think about planting one. But I would say knocking these ships out here. Of course, this one's going to be covered by the SMD. Of course I say that. Does Elderbrock even have an SMD? Oh, this is begging for a nuke from Team 2. Team 2... Sorry, Team 1 needs to plan. Are they even aware that there is no SMD? I'm not seeing a site down. A uh, 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 mark down. Shoot down middle SMD. We have two nukes. That's from Krozak. Speaking from beyond. Now he wants to nuke there. Now, if his team listens to that... That's going to be uh, not good news. we got two SMDs here and two missiles in the clip. Maybe he thinks there's only going to be one. 
Meanwhile, the battle continues to rage centrally with the Navy. To me, it feels like this is where it's at. A whole bunch of uh, torpedo bombers coming here. And it looks like they're going to try and pick off an aircraft carrier in the rear. And able to impact... Well... They knocked about 1%. <laughs> ah! Well, for all of those uh, torp bombers, that to me felt like it was a waste. Looks like Wazup, and no surprise with his air grid, is now dominating on the ASF side. Let's have a little look. Wazup here with 130 ASF, some as well on his team. But I don't think the other side is anywhere near. We got 46 ASF down there. Any more? Uh, okay, so while on the face of it here, especially with his Navy push out, Team 2 looking very strong. They're going to be... Nice. SMD picks out the overfly nuke there. Still one left in the clip. Shame they couldn't have waited. These battleships are easily able to wipe this base off the face of the map. And I'm wondering, is Elderbrock going to take that as a priority? What we got down here? First SACU that I'm seeing on the front line. Is that Wazup? Was up? Okay, Wazup getting greedy here, looking to reclaim the mass. Now, these are eight, 900 mass apiece. SACU doing a great job here picking it up, but it looks like he is going to pay the price for doing so. And indeed, yeah, we got T3 sub hunters, of course, the Seraphins with their T3 subs. Very, very deadly. And Smackdown, a nuke finally wipes out that central base. A long time coming. I think uh, this stage of the game, especially when your opponent's got numerous battleships pushing through the mid on this map, is a little ambitious to hold there. Some would argue it was a waste of a nuke because the battleships would have cleared it out anyway. Let's see if these battleships able to push through as we approach minute number 32. Not yet been able to see mass incomes. Let's have a look. So far, 192 for Team 1, 149 for Team 2. That is incredible because if we take a look at this, Team 2 there on the right looks like they're pushing through and they're doing this with uh, basically two-thirds of the mass versus their opponent. Income-wise, Team 1, 1 1.5 versus 1.8. So despite Team 1 being massively ahead on mass overall, Team 2 in the lead on the income for now. Team 2 dominating in the air with the torpedo bombers. This is what it comes down to. Team 1, sorry, with the air. Team 2 with the navy. Is that a nuke or did a uh, ACU just go pop? Battleships starting to go down now for Team 2. I just got the feeling if Elderbrock can make this work, he's going to win the game. If he can't, he's going to lose it because the other side has got air. And with this air grid, I can't see Team 2 ever getting air back. Elderbrock continuing to push through. So many frigates here. We have got two battleships for Alina, but I do think it's too little too late. That said, they're surely going to pick this off. There we go. Very heavily damaged. And a load of torpedo bombers from Artanis here getting in, into the mix. Let's have a look, actually. How many is Artanis contribute? 21. Well, I feel bad for Elderbrock here. He must be screaming for air. And he hasn't got any. And had he had it... No two ways about it. I think this would have been the end of the game. Elderbrock pushing in through here with all those T3 battleships is going to wipe out everything except perhaps this base here. You can see Artanis is desperately trying to get some ASF together here. He's got 
well, 60-some, but I do think if he got involved, it will just be for naught. He is, however, still able to keep going with these torpedo bombers. We need SAM sites here. We need SAM sites. If you're rooting for Team 1 here on the left, they need SAM sites, because if they can start... ensuring that none of the enemy team... Well, I don't know. Strategic launch detected. I think the enemy team seem to have given up on the air front. Surely they must be realising that uh, if this battle goes south, they're going to dump so much mass on the enemy's doorstep. We do got another nuke coming in the other way. And again, we saw no SMD here before. Still no SMD. How can this be allowed to happen? Support commander's going up. And is this nuke going to get through? I think Elderbrock incredibly lucky that the other team haven't yet realised he doesn't have strategic missile defence. This is a really juicy target. And I think he's just clinging to hope that they never realise. I do not believe it. Somehow, Elderbrock pushed back. And yeah, okay, Elderbrock spamming Sam sights down. He needed to do this a little while ago. It kind of feels like Elderbrock versus the entire, but hang on what we got here. A disruptor. A disruptor out from team two, same kin. Problem is that the opposing base is too shielded up at this point. Disrupt, yeah, look at that. It's not like a third off this little T2 shield. And with the regen, he's going to take at least four shots, at least, to break through that. And in that time, we're going to have multiple levels of shields. Now, we do got a round of artillery. It makes me think, is he aiming over here? We'll have to see. We've got more artillery out here from Team 2. What we got? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Now, if they if they combine their two heavy artillery pieces, they're going to be able to break through, I think, at this stage. Certainly over here. Elderbrock with the counter-counter attack, and this time with a shed load of flak and SAM sites, I don't think the other team is going to be able to get rid of him in the same way as they were before. Apologies for missing this, a whole massive strat run. Were they able to take out the... Oh, the artillery survives! The artillery survives just... Maybe there was one here that was damaged, but this one survives. And of course, with one still being down here... Still feels like this is anyone's game, and I feel like if it weren't for Elderbrock... It would have gone to Team 1 a long time ago. Again, Alina chucking away these T1 frigates into the line of the battleships. And, yeah, the, this has to be done. The manual targeting here from Elderbrot is going to knock out the experimental battleship there. Strategic launch detected. And now these battleships are just going to be left to clean up these frigates. And you see, it's a one shot, one kill. And that there, I don't know how they all managed to miss. Oh, a nuke coming in. Is this a defensive nuke? And it is. Lovely placed defensive nuke. This had to be killed because don't forget, the only thing keeping these battleships alive was the SAM sites. Here we see a counter nuke. Is it going to come in? <laughs> it is. I'm not sure that was the most efficient nuke ever there from Team 2, but at least it connected. Right. Team 2 finally making a move with the ASF. I guess the priority is to keep these two support commanders alive while they're allowed to build up uh, SAM sites.
Alina gets taken out there. How? Did he quit? Again, do let us know. Oh, and maybe, maybe, maybe a piece of artillery. Ground fire landed on in that, of course, is possible. Meanwhile, the T3 long range artillery com continues to pound now. Look at this. Team 1 started to stealth up a little base in the rear here. Question is, have Team 2 any idea? Yes, they do. And they've pinged it. Got a huge wave of ASF, more strategic bombers coming in. Beautiful placement there. And they are able to break through and take out this piece of artillery. And uh, just as they take out one, the other one's back up to full strength. And wasting no time. The first thing there, Sankin does is get to rebuild. We got any more disruptors here? Well, one, two. We got two disruptors, and of course this one up here. So we got three disruptors firing. Another tempest here out. This one with twelve kills. I'm probably thinking that these 12 kills are high value kills we see one battleship going down here he's focusing in on this one here and perhaps one more shot from the tempest and indeed there it goes oh air grid starting to go down for was up he's got very little left now he's got two shields and a handful of structures. To me, that looks like Wasup is out and he indeed is donating stuff. Wasup throws in the towel. He quits. He realizes the writing's on the wall. Bosh. 41 minutes. With the endless disruptor fire, the Navy punching through. And this, one of the very few games I have ever seen where having air dominance did not win that team the game. Doesn't happen often. So at one stage it was like three if not four to one on ASF and team one was just unable to capitalize. These three guys still valiantly holding on here for team one. Don't forget it was six v four at one point and the same four players are still clinging on for team two having knocked out three of their six opponents so far. Uh, once more, we've got another wave of strat bombers coming in for Team 2, and I do wonder where are they going for? Is it the disruptors? Now they're going to get picked up now. Sam sites are going to delete one, two, at least three of the strat bombers going down, perhaps four. But the rest of them connecting. Very nice late pickup there. The later in game and the worse the shape your team's in, the greater it feels when you get a pickup like that, even though it kind of feels like the writing's on the wall. Numerous uh, support commanders going pop. This little secret base down the back here, going down for naught. Meanwhile, this arse washer out from Team 1, as if things weren't bad enough for Team 2. Drops a bomb and then control Ks. How nasty is that? And was that able to take out the nuke? Look at that. Blow up on nukes. Lieutenant Reed thinks, fuck this, I'm off. He quits, leaving Atlant uh, Artanis here by himself. Bang. One more player to go. We got T3 RT, we got nukes, we got strat bombers, we got arse washers, we got T3 battleships, and the rest. And Artanis thinks, I ain't gonna let you have the pleasure. That's it, what a game. High level rated, lasting 43 minutes. Until next time, hope you enjoyed it. Take care, bye bye.